I'm Simon Forsyth. I make music under the name of Technomatic, uh, also in a partnership with a chap called Martin Swan, uh, who does Dark Carpentry. Um, we played the first EMOM, and I'm jumping in to fill in at last minute on Friday. So when did you get started? When did you get the bug for making music? Probably my earliest musical memories being terrified as a three-year-old by my dad playing uh, Dark Side of the Moon very loudly on his new stereo. It was back in the 70s. And then from there, it was uh, things like Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. Um, and then synthesizers became a big thing and just completely caught my... Um, I think it was the, the, the zeitgeist of... of uh, science fiction in the late 70s with Star Wars and everything and synthesizers they all sort of seemed to come together at the right moment and that was it I was just kind of hooked and so I've been messing around and fiddling with them since I was able to buy my first one in the mid 80s I think. So you went straight in for the synth you didn't get kind of sidetracked by the punk explosion and grab a guitar and go. I had plenty of incentive because my dad was a guitarist um, and so he tried to encourage me to sort of pick up the guitar but I could never sort of get my literally get my hands into the, the shapes and they put me off whereas a synthesizer you could just do this and make any sounds you know imaginable so that kind of captured my uh, attention straight away there's lots of you know instantly instant feedback of sounding great rather than having to you know endure hours and hours of sounding terrible so can you remember the first synth you had i actually bought a tb303 for like about 50 quid back in 85 and, and just wow. didn't get on with that <laughs> and like took it back a couple of weeks later and traded it for a second hand sh101 which i absolutely loved and that's that's just the kind of machine i really bonded with early on have you still got it by the way no no i've gone through about four or five i think over the last 40 years but i've now got um an intelligio atlantis which is kind of the 101 like it certainly can get all the same tones but it can do an awful lot more and it's this big rather than you know this big which for my circumstances is really rather good so so i guess that brings us on to to modular so when did you get because I, I know you've got a history with kind of expansive synths um, how, how did it pan out what was the what was the route in well there was there's kind of two it came in sort of two stages. I mean, um, when I was doing music and programming and things a lot more back in the 90s, I actually had a 2600. So that was really my first foray into modular, and I absolutely loved that. And it broke my heart when I had to get, when I had to sell that. And then nothing for quite a while. And then I got um, back into, with semi-modular, I had a, a, a Telemark, which I still have, uh, Analog Solution Telemark. Um, then I had a, a Vostok also from Tom, um, and that kind of got me into the being able to build your own synthesizer effectively by reordering the pathways. And at that point, Eurorack was starting to really pick up, and so I went along to the first Super Booth, and then it, was, it was sort of became very much like Sonic Lego for me. You know, you can just like buy all these things and connect them together and and take whatever sort of sonic pathway or journey and you want and quite often find things along the way that you know you weren't expecting to but actually sounded better than what was in your head originally so when it comes to performance do you start with a blank sheet and are you going to kind of literally making up on the spot or do you have a pre-prepared like themes or elements or building blocks of tunes or are they complete songs in themselves how, how does it work well this is actually probably my my first ever solo performance so i'm having to kind of think this through rather quickly um with, with the dark carpentry stuff i um I, I take the more improvisational approach and quite often not even pre-patched a few basic things like uh mixer tr uh, trunking and and uh, clock distribution and that's about it and then everything else i kind of improvise on the spot build a patch as we go but that's because i've got martin there who has sequences and things like that to help drive the things and i'm basically supplementing that i think this will need a, a different approach because I've, I've basically got to supply everything so I've, i'm looking at the moment at, at visiting a couple of tracks that i have up on 
SoundCloud and doing edited versions of those that I can reproduce um, with part soundtrack and part um, modular all clocked together. And uh, yeah, that's that's the idea. We'll see if that works at all. I know. So it's definitely going to be a journey of adventure. <laughs> oh yeah, adventure is uh, is definitely on the cards. Um, probably <laughs> I only I will know just how adventurous it's been. <laughs> Um, hopefully, hopefully the audience will be oblivious to it and just in, enjoy what what comes out sonically. But yeah, in my head, you're obviously going no. <laughs> okay, how's everyone doing tonight down at Bath City Football Club? Where I where I come from up in Yorkshire, we've got the my local team is Huddersfield, Huddersfield Town. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I bet if you went to Huddersfield Town tonight, there wouldn't be something as cool as this going on, sadly. Um, so uh, our next artist, we'll have a chat with him at the end, goes by the name of Technomadic, because he's a nomad and he does techno and all sorts of kind of different stuff. Really interested to hear actually uh, more about your, your concepts. So, uh, yeah, big round of applause for Techno Madik!
Abdullah and the Artoria. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your techniques. Um, cheating. <laughs> cheating. We all do that, but, you know, let, technological wise. Uh, well, uh, this is the first um, solo performance I've ever done, and um, Nick called, uh, messaged me last Friday <laughs> to tell me to do this. So, this has kind of come together literally in the last seven days. Um, Amazing. Seven days' work to bring you this beautiful art. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of uh, bringing out an existing track that I'd actually done. It was made of. of um, Shh. <laughs> I'm not saying much. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the track started out with a whole bunch of uh, field recordings walking around Super Booth, which is maybe some people recognise some of the sounds in there. From um, I really like that idea of walking around and just recording stuff and then feeding it into this. Fantastic. It, it, it sort of came out of that idea. That you walk around and you're hearing all of these different types of music playing from different different stands and things. In fact, some of that was actually ripped straight from <laughs> what I heard as I'm, as I'm walking around and then just sort of building musical ideas. Call it samples. Yeah, yeah and to, to kind of get it to all sort of sit, sit together. A bit of Berlin School in there as well and a bit of techno. Yeah, sort of assortment box. Absolutely wonderful stuff. So good. Um, and people grooving and moving around the room tonight. Yeah, Super. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, where can we listen to your music online? Um, I'm terrible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible dot com. There's, there's literally nothing out there. There was a, a few things on SoundCloud, but I, I, this week has kind of pushed me into setting up a Bandcamp thing. So I'll be um, putting up a, a free version of, well, tweaked version of what I did tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah. for free. You can listen again at SoundCloud. Oh, Technomatic. And Bandcamp, wonderful stuff. <laughs>